Hey, this is Steve from SewingGold.com, and I'm going to do a video of common, uh, mostly user error problems. Um, the first one I'm going to do, I actually have my uh, machine threaded up, and I'm going to check and see if it sews. And hopefully it doesn't, because it really shouldn't sew all that well the way I have this. Um, I don't know if you can see the problem, but I will explain it after I sew for a second. And let's see if I have caused the problem that I want to cause, and I have. So, if we look down at the material here, we've got stitches that are skipped. So this is the type of call I'm going to get. My, my stitches are skipping. Why is this happening? Well, the first thing I'm going to ask you is to check your threading. Usually the skipping is not the threading, but usually it's something to do with the needle. So, what do we think the problem is? If I check that needle, you can't see it from the video here unless I really zoom in. So I'm going to zoom in and see if you can see what is wrong. I'm going to tell you, of course. Uh, let's see if I could zoom in and you can actually see the problem. So it's sort of hard to tell from the video, but I'm going to grab another needle and explain. Okay, there we go. Whoops. All right, so needles. Needles are completely round other than the bottom part of the needle there. You have that little cutout. See that cutout when I turn? See, right above the eye of the needle, you have that cutout. That cutout is always supposed to be here. So facing to the inside, let me zoom back out so you can see where I'm pointing. Okay, so that cutout, it should be here on the needle facing the inside of the machine. The way I put this needle in, it's on the other side, okay? So if you put it on the other side, even if you thread this right, which I've threaded it right, I'm threading it from left to right, but I've got the needle, that little groove. So if we go again, let's see if it'll focus. It's not really focusing. That little groove, the little blurry, blurry groove. Let me see if I can. There we go. So that little groove right above the eye of the needle has to go to the inside or to the right. Okay? If it's not, if it's on the, the right side like I have mine, skip stitches. Okay, one very popular problem. Okay, so all I've got to do is I'm going to have to cut the thread, of course, and re thread it. I'm going to loosen this. Excuse my hands for a second. I'm going to turn the needle completely around. Thread the needle. I don't think we need to go through me doing this. I guess I could have paused this, but this will be a little longer video with me going through all the steps. So now if I put this back, and now I'm going to sew on this piece. Once I start sewing, you're going to see the difference. Still got on a nice long stitch, but the needle now is in correctly. Okay. Turn it around. Oops. And there we go. So if we look at the bottom, the bottom is with the needle in the in the wrong in the wrong way. Okay, this is the wrong way. See, we're skipping, and this is the right way. Every stitch is correct. Okay, that's one common user error problem. Happens a lot. Next one. I'm gonna zoom back out, and I'm gonna show you another common problem. Okay, hang on. Let me move this around a little bit. All right, right in the front here, hopefully you can see. I can't really see because my little tripod's in the way. All right, now taking the thread out. Okay, so right now, if we look, down below here, we've got the foot in the down position. 
I always tell people when they're threading the machine, whoops, sorry, sort of hard with my chair and the tripod. All right, so when the foot is in the down position like that, we really don't want to thread the machine unless we're really going to pull the, uh, the thread through the discs. Ah, I should have just actually done it and not said anything. Then you could have seen the problem, but I will show you the problem. So when I thread this up, don't worry about all the guides because the guides are not the, the, the main thing I'm trying to show in this video is uh, how people thread. So um, how they thread it wrong. So when I thread this, I'm usually holding both um, both sides of the thread. So if you, you can't really see my hands, but um, one hand here and then on the other side I have my other hand, hand holding it this tight. So it's nice and tight. A lot of time people are only holding this one side like this. So it's, it's loose. So now you can see it's not tight. There it's tight. Here it's the loose. So what they do is they're going to put that, uh, the foot in, the foot still in the down position. And if I start to thread this, as you can see, the thread right here doesn't go in between the discs. You're going to have zero tension. Even if you go through a little bit, you're going to have zero tension. Okay. So if I did this, let me go through the threading and then I'm going to show you what happens. Okay, I'm going to leave it like this. Let me pause it so we don't have to make the video extra long. I'm going to go through the threading um, where it's nice and loose like this, where I'm not going through the discs, and I'm going to show you what happens. Okay, we're all threaded up. I'm going to move the camera out so you can see the actual stitch. All right, here we go. And there's another thing I'm going to show you also, another common error. So I'm going to start sewing. This could cause bunching thread. I'm going to actually make the stitch smaller just so we'll get a little more stitches in there. Actually, it actually pulled the thread right into the disc. So this is not a good machine to do that demonstration. I'm actually going to show you something different. So thread actually was pulled in between those discs surprisingly. So another common error would be thread behind the discs. Okay, so looks like it's in between the discs, but it's not. So now we should get bunches of thread underneath because we don't have much tension. And that's ugly. Okay, so just check your, your threading. Um, I mean, it looks like it's threaded properly, but if you look close enough, it's actually behind the discs. That doesn't happen a ton. It's more of when people don't put it in between the disc, but still, you could still get knots of thread underneath if you do that. Um, another problem that I've had recently with um, a few different customers was not threading the check spring. Um, so that would be this piece here. Um, and it's just going to give you inconsistencies. It's not going to be horrible, but it will be inconsistent. So I'm going to pause the video again and rethread the machine without the check spring uh, threaded. Okay, I have the check spring uh, threaded improperly, I guess if that's correct. Right, incorrect, I guess. Um, okay, so here we go. We're going to sew. Now, it's not going to be horrible because the check string's still moving, but it's not going to be perfectly consistent. It may not seem much, but it will uh, cause an issue um, depending on how thick your material is. Um, you might get the little dots underneath there. And it looks like my, my stitch is a little wavy, so um, not a major problem, but still something to look at. Okay, so that's my outside stitch here. Bottom just has more dots. A little more dots than the other stitch like here it was a perfect stitch and then here is without the check spring so you get more of those dots a little inconsistent one dots okay more dots here so that's my white coming through so my actual top threads not being pulled up enough so if you look at it uh, give me one sec while I grab that phone okay so remember this one is where I didn't thread the check spring and I actually just flipped it in there just now so threading the check string properly, let me just show you that too, just so you can understand what I mean by threading the check spring. 
I don't know if I've explained this one exactly. All right, so from here, I'm gonna put this, move this in front. Sorry, I don't have like a super smooth way of moving this. So when we thread this, remember I wanna hold this nice and tight while I'm doing this, especially for the check spring. So I'm gonna go in between the discs. Make sure your foot's in the up position when you do this, like I said. Okay, so when I thread the check spring, I'm going to pull up. So if you look right here, this piece, this metal piece, you're going to want the thread to pass that. And you'll hear a click, okay? And this is on a lot of, uh, especially the walking foot machines that have like this dual tension. Not, excuse me, let me go back. It's not a dual tension. The single tension here and then the check spring here. Okay, so technically no, no dual tension, okay? Single tension. So you've got the tension here and then your check spring. You never want to move this piece unless you're strengthening or re uh, reducing the pressure on this check spring, but that's another video altogether. Don't touch this. This is your tension. You can mess around with this if you want to tighten it or loosen it. That's up to you. Okay, going back. So putting uh, the thread in the check spring, I want to hold both sides. I'm holding with my left hand here. You can't see my right hand, and I'm going to you hear that little click, hopefully you heard that little click, and as you can see, the thread passed that piece right there. And then you wanna go on and keep threading it. Okay, another common, somewhat of a user error problem. Um, more user error problems. This is a very common one, and it's really not a user error problem, it's just don't know, not knowing how to use the machine. Um, I'm gonna just, give me a sec while I turn this. Um, reverse lever. Uh, reverse lever and stitch length are, they, they, they work in unison together in a way where if I've got the, the stitch regulator here, watch the reverse lever move up and down. Uh, I might not be able to turn it ever so uh, without having to push this down. Um, you could have a problem turning this. So you really want to grab your stitch regulator and, I'm sorry, your reverse lever, too late in the day. My apologies. Okay, going back. Reverse lever, stitch regulator. So if I push this down, it's going to make this much easier to turn. If I don't, moving it this way is, is hard because, as you can see, it's moving the reverse lever. They're tied together, okay? Because when I depress this down, it's going to make the same stitch length but going backwards as I'm going to go forward. So right now it's on a 7. So going backwards, it should do a 7 also. Okay, but if you go in the middle, it's not going to do a seven. It's going to do something else. You really don't want to go in the middle of it. You want to go all the way down. You want the same, same stitch length back, backwards and forwards. So, like I said, this is all tied together, and you can see it. It's easier when I do it like that. So watch it move up. Okay, so they're tied together. Okay, so if this is too tight, like going the other way, it's really tight. Like it's hard to turn. Now it's stopped. Okay, and this is on a lot of machines. Uh, the more heavy-duty the machine, sometimes the harder it is to turn. But all you got to do is grab your reverse lever, and now nice and loose. Okay, so not really a user error problem, just something that we can um, easily remedy by just knowing that they're tied together. Okay, so let me think about some other user error problems or beginning things that we need to go over. Um, this one, I'm working actually on a Juki DNU 1541 here. Um, a lot of these problems are on a lot, like all, all machines, especially the reverse thing. Check spring thing, that's going to be on a lot of walking foot machines. Um, standard machines aren't going to have like a, a Juki 8700 or 5550. They're not going to have that check spring. They're just going to have a, one main tension. Uh, but you could still, you know, the needle backwards thing, that's all machines uh, and most industrial machines unless it's a zigzag are going to thread the way I've got this one threaded um, the uh, straight uh, like a zigzag machine is going to thread front to back so if you put the needle in backwards on that one same thing you're going to have that skipping problem okay uh, let's see if we could figure out a couple more your user error problems give me one sec to figure something else out all right here's another common sewing error actually this isn't even a machine problem this is actually the sewer in general um, is just used to helping the machine along. Um, people breaking their needles, this could be why you're breaking your needles. Now, breaking your needles could be using too thin of a needle for the fabric that you're, you're sewing on. 
let's say I'm sewing on some heavy leather and I'm using a standard point needle plus it's a real thin one so I'm like using a size 14 needle when I use, need to use a size 20 needle um, that you know you're gonna the, the threat the needle is gonna reroute itself through the material if the material is too thick and it can't pierce it properly and then you're gonna break the needle you risk knocking your machine out of time um, that's an easy way to break your needles um, using the wrong needle for the wrong job uh, the other thing is pulling the fabric. Um, with this walking foot machine, this machine needs no help pulling the fabric through. You don't want to really help it unless you give it a little nudge. You're not going to want to tug on it. Okay, I've seen going over those humps and stuff. Give it a little push, fine. Um, but you still risk breaking the needle. Um, I'm going to try not to break this needle because I don't want it flying in my face. But I could pull on this. While I'm sewing, if I pull on this, I literally can break the needle. Um, I'm going slow enough where hopefully I don't cause this issue, but either way. So if I'm pulling along here, and I just actually pulled it out, sorry. I'm trying to avoid getting nailed by a needle if it breaks. So we don't want to pull the fabric. Not only that, you're just going to cause an inconsistent stitch. Um, helping it along is one thing. Uh, you just don't want to be pulling on this. Like I see people pulling like this, and pulling and pulling, and... I'm not getting lucky to break the needle, which is, I guess, a good thing, uh, but you could break that needle. So don't try and help it, okay? Just let it, you know, you're just going to guide it along, all right? That's an easy way to break a needle, and then you can cause a timing problem. Um, we see that quite often. Um, let me think of a couple more user error props that I could throw in this video, and then we will be done for the day. Okay, two more problems. Uh, this one, hopefully you can see what I've done. I'm going to try and sew, and we're getting nothing. So what happened there was the thread broke. Why did the thread break? Uh, same issue we were talking about before, but this one, instead of the needle being in backwards, I actually threaded it backwards. So instead of threading it from left to right, I threaded it from right to left and the thread broke right away. This is another common error. It happens with experienced sewers too once in a while. They forget that they're supposed to thread it from left to right and they thread it like I just did. Okay, so we're gonna bring it down and it's just gonna break the thread. So this one, yep, it's out of the needle. Okay, so that's another common problem. Another problem I've seen uh, don't see it all that much is the machine actually sewing backwards um, and that's more of the motor uh, running clockwise 99% um, of machines are going to run not 99% but most machines standard lock stitch machines are going to run uh, counterclockwise this one just happens to run um, counterclockwise uh, blind stitchers and cover stitchers are one and overlocks will run uh, clockwise but uh, standard lock stitch walking foot uh, those are going to run um, counterclockwise. So if you see the material feeding backwards, uh, if you're not hitting the reverse button, then you may just have the motor revolving the wrong way. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, okay that the video on uh, uh, frequently asked some, some frequently asked pro questions and problems. So with this, um, next time I make one of these videos, I think I'm going to make an outline because sort of all over the place uh, but hopefully it has helped a few a few different people um, with different problems it is a long video to go through um, with different issues and me just talking too much uh, so if you have any questions or comments leave them below hopefully they're positive comments um, otherwise you know I'll remake this video uh, with me talking less hope this helps thank you Steve from sewinggold.com